And here's another interesting thing. Just last month, I was reading The Barefoot Boy from Val Marie by Jean Stav. The family who took over the LaPrice farm now without the year great grandfather? Grandpa. Uncle. Or, or, Haley's great uncle. And Jean writes about a night in that very same field where my aunt heard voices singing. It was 1932, he was 13 years old. It was a beautiful summer evening and he was just returning from the field and this is what he writes. I was driving a six horse team after a day's cultivating. The horses were eager to get to the barn and shed their harnesses, get some oats and a drink of water before being turned out for the night. As I increased my stride to keep up with them, I became aware of the sound of voices singing. I looked around but could see nothing. I was old enough at the time to have formulated in my mind what could be real and what was not. I willingly accepted that this was real, without fear and without a doubt. The singing voices became louder and I could make out the words to the song. It was a Christmas carol. But it was midsummer. And when I looked up, trying to determine where exactly it was coming from, the heavens were filled with a heavenly chorus. It was so beautiful that I had not been able to put it in words or out of my head. And then, like all writers, he does his best to try and put it in words. Or at least it's described its impact on him, which 70 years later was as vivid and clear and certain as the night of the revelation, as he calls it. And from that day on, he was left with no fear, only the most peaceful calm and joy. Now, I've never met Jean Stubb, but those who have can attest to the fact that he did claim to see these angels and hear these voices, and he was a pretty calm guy. He never did have another occurrence like that. Someone suggested to him it was a mirage brought on by the summer heat, but he retorted by saying, well, mirages are of real things, like trees and hills and cars and ships and other objects. And they don't have sound accompanying them. The image I was seeing was of such beauty and form and was accompanied by such soulful music that I know nothing on earth that compares to it. And I'm willing to believe Jane. I'd rather believe him than not. And I'd even surmise that that same band of angels were the ones that egged on my aunt to take her vows. And I'm willing enough that I've walked out to that very field many times on a summer, winter, and fall evening. I never really ran into any angels, but I stood bathed in sunset, waiting for stars, waiting for the singing to begin. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for Sometimes down, coming for to carry me home. But I still know I'm freedom bound, coming for to carry me home. If I get there before you do, coming.
Somente.